The government uh, argued before the Supreme Court that while the church has the constitutional right to control its own internal activities, it loses those rights when it engages the public. So when a church decides to open its door to the public to provide a socially beneficial service for a fee, then churches have no more rights under the First Amendment than social clubs or labor unions. So again, th this, this, this idea is that, sure, you can be a religious organization, but so long as you stay inside these carefully circumscribed bounds. But as soon as you start going outside that, as soon as you start engaging the public, as soon as you start serving the public, as soon as you offer services in exchange for a fee, ah, now you're acting like a business. Now, that's not how religious schools understand themselves, simply because they charge tuition. But those are the rules that the government is trying to force religious organizations to play for, um, uh, to play under. The bottom line is that there seems to be a concerted effort by this administration that the government can't deny that religious liberty exists. It's right there in the First Amendment. And so there's not, there's not sort of a head-on challenge to religious liberty per se. But perhaps we can shrink the number of people uh, in groups that get it. So it's kind of like the way an oncologist might treat cancer. You're going to try to sort of shrink down this mass. And that's the way we're going to treat this disease. Um, other people have remarked that this is treating religious liberty like smoking. It's a dirty habit that doesn't belong in public.